Hi, this is Eric Allen on behalf of Aileron. In this interview, Dave Sullivan, Aileron's executive in residence, offers his thoughts on dealing with an economic downturn. How can you innovate when times are tough? What should you be focusing on to stabilize your business and make it better? Dave addresses these issues and offers real-life examples of companies that are adapting to the changing marketplace. Hi, Eric. How are you? Good to see you. I'm real good. Thank you. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, falling up in a down economy, um, okay. you know, gaining forward momentum in what most are calling a brutal and hostile economic environment. Um, you know, many small business owners are struggling with issues like customer attention, cash flow, and downsizing. And if someone goes to them and says, well, you should think about innovating right now, it's almost like telling somebody to pick a, a countertop while their house is burning. I mean, yeah. it, it, it is really scary and hard for them to, to get past that fear. So what does innovation mean for a small business uh, in these downturn times? How can they use that to their advantage? You know, I think, first of all, we, have, we, we do have to acknowledge that this is a difficult economy at a different time. And so the first thing we have to do, and, and, and I've been using a term, look at your runway. You know, what's the purpose of a runway? You land, but you also use it to take off. So step one is the length of your runway. So and that's pretty simple to figure out. You kind of look at the monies and the expenses you have every month. And you divide those into the dollars you have left, and that tells you what the length of your runway is. So step one in a down economy is you got to be able to figure out how to extend the runway so you can take off. But more importantly, you need to take off again. And, and I think what I've watched a lot of business owners do now is do everything they can and cut just to survive. But my fear is they'll do worse on the upturn than they will have experienced uh, pr problems in the downturn. So I'm saying if you cut back, you're cutting back for a purpose, but at the same time, you have no choice but to invest. You have to start building and getting better people. Uh, you have to invest in getting the right customer. Some of that means getting rid of the wrong customer. Some of that means finding some customers from other struggling competitors. You can find better people. You can find equipment. You can find an awful lot of talent out there. But first is having the attitude that there is a future, that there is a recovery, and that I intend to be part of that. So what I'm going to do is not only get my business stable for the moment, but I'm going to get a position to grow coming out of that. And that's the innovation side. I've got to find ways to take it to the next level, not just to survive the current situation. Well, but in that, when you say innovate, I, I, I think some business owners' minds could go to a, a tech company or a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company, and they can say, I, there is no research department. There, there, there is no department in my company to do that. So who should be doing this innovating in a small business? And I think, you know, when you're in a small business, first of all, you're in a survival mode, so there's no one in your organization who isn't core to the success in the future. And everybody needs to be accountable to the future. So I think it's you and your team sitting down saying, you know, when there is difficulty, there's also opportunity. What can we do? And I, and I talk about innovation. I don't talk about R&D. I don't talk about acquisition. I'm thinking about better ways to reach the right customer. Okay. Uh, one of the ways I can do that is to de-feature my offerings. I can take things out that are not valued by the customer and make sure I sell them exactly what they want. I can go the other way. I can look at what my customer's needs and wants are. I can collectively with them understand the problem. And the two of us, the customer and myself, can fix that problem and make it go away. That's innovation. It's not R&D. It's, it's not coming up with new products. It's finding a better way to be more valuable to the right customer and using your correct people to make that happen. And that's everybody's job in an organization. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It just says I need a different way of thinking about this. And I have to believe that there's a reason to do this long term for the success of my enterprise as well as my customer's business. Um, yeah. uh, uh, well, what should business owners be asking themselves in these challenging times? Uh, how should they try to be innovative? I mean, I'm, I'm sort of groping for a question here, but, but well, at, I, at the I heart know where you're going, thing. I think. I, I, and I, I think, you know, it's an interesting question because I, I think what you have to do is say, what is the core of my business? Okay. You know, what is it that, I mean, if I'm in the tool and die business, if, if I'm a manufacturer's rep, if I'm providing a professional service, what's core to what I do? What, what is it that makes me unique? What is the reason I got in the business? And I think in a tough time, what you do is you cut back to the core, okay. not into the core. And then I think you take the best minds in your company and you take your boards and you take your customers and you think through how to make the core better. 
And so, you know, if, if my core is, is making a part, then I want to make sure I make that part very well and then I sell it to a customer that's willing to pay for it. Well, then I don't start adding parts that I'm not sure that can go anywhere. I don't start adding parts that don't have a return. I don't start proliferating my business. I get tighter and more focused in my business. That, to me, is innovation in a, in a tough period. That makes sense. I mean, well, it sounds more like they're revealing their business more than they are pushing it, innovating. Yeah, very much so. Okay. Very much so. Well, I mean, when you say innovation, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people say Apple is at the forefront of that, not necessarily for the technology, but how they, how they acquire new customers. But aside from the big ones, can you think of any personally that, that you admire for their, their innovation uh, in the sense of customer retention and getting better at handling customers? Yeah, I, I just was, was speaking with a guy recently whose primary industry is the automotive sector, and he sells to the big three domestic players. And, you know, he's a small producer, but he works with the big players. Well, you know, their business is way off, but they're not out of business. Mm -hmm. So what he's been doing is sitting with, especially General Motors in his case, saying, okay, what is the job to be done that's going to be done regardless of your economy that you absolutely have to get done? And he's been making sure they know he's a valuable partner in making that happen. And because of that, he's getting orders from General Motors while they're cutting off in other areas. Wow. I saw a second guy who's a manufacturer's rep. He basically sells... Uh, you know, uh, discs and, and TVs and flat screen TVs. But he's been worried that all of his manufacturers would cut him off because he was too big and that they could do it in-house cheaper. Well, they went the other way. They were laying off their own direct sales force, so he's been proving to them that he has the ability to do the job that they once did. So he's taken a chance. He's seen an opportunity in this, and he's growing his business by going to his customers saying, I can take some of that burden off of you. I can help you. And it's working for both of those in that example. Wow. Uh, well, then, uh, I think as a last question, I, I always ask uh, what to look out for. So, uh, you know, thinking of a small business owner that's, that's trying to get their head around the concept of innovating and not being re totally reactive, uh, what, what, are, what are the warnings? What, well, what are the first mistakes? Mistake one is cutting back your competency too much so that you can't handle any potential opportunity. Okay. So, yeah, you got to get rid of waste and fat, but you can't get the bone and tendon. Okay. Because that's, that, to me, is step one. Step two is when opportunities are available, don't just get all excited about the fact that it appears to be something positive. Understand whether you can handle it. And then go after the pieces and parts of opportunity that you can actually handle and build into your company. That means you've got the infrastructure. That means you've got the people. That means you've got the systems to handle it. But we've said this for a long time, high growth kills small businesses more than anything else. Okay. So things have been down for so long, anything positive looks like you ought to grab onto it. I'm just saying to any business owner, be very selective. Grab the things you can handle. Go after the things that are to tie to the core of your business and take your time coming out of this and just grow in a solid control basis. Stay in control of the company. Don't experience the industry. Well, thanks a lot for sharing those tips today. Uh, that was uh, really helpful, Dave. Thanks. Thank you. Just be cautious, but be positive. Things will come back. Just be in control of it when they do. Great. If you thought Dave's insights were thought-provoking and helpful, Aileron can help you dig deeper into these concepts. As a working foundation dedicated to helping business owners succeed, we have targeted offerings that can help you explore your issues and plan for long-term success. Visit aileron.net for more details.